Hello, my name is Michael Edward Bradford, and I have a very, very important message to share with you. We are living in unprecedented times. The question is, what's really going on? This information has come to me within the last couple of days, and I'd like to share it with you. I'm hesitant to share it, but from a soul level, I feel like it's very important for me to share it and that I have an obligation to share it. I hope that the information is a lot more positive than this. However, this is the information that's coming through now, and there's a bunch of probabilities. What the actual outcome will be, I have no idea. Today is April 4th, 2020, and I'm in lockdown in Cape Town, South Africa, and we're here for at least 21 days. And my sense is that it's gonna be a lot longer than 21 days. I'm being told that we've now entered a time, an unprecedented time, and there is no model for these times or for what we are currently experiencing. Because we are in unprecedented times, none of our past ways of thinking, acting, or processing information will help us now. We are on entirely new ground, and because of this, we must think radically different and be extremely creative. We have no clue where things are going from here, and even the governments and so-called experts have no clue how things are going to go and what the final outcome will be. Back in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, some people began moving out of the cities, moving into rural communities, buying large stocks of dehydrated food, and they were preparing for catastrophe. Some people were even expecting massive earthquakes, while others were expecting the world economy to collapse. That did not happen back then. Back then, many psychics saw a huge yellow cloud over Atlanta, Georgia. That's where the Center for Disease Control was located. What they thought was that a disease was going to get out, escape, and affect the community. Now, that has not happened in the United States, but it has happened in China. I have no clue what the real story about the virus is, and the real story doesn't really matter. What matters is that we survive. What does matter is that we do a reality check and have a realistic picture of what is happening now, what can happen, and to be prepared for it, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Here are a few scenarios, including what I am intuitively getting as the percentage of each probability. The first probability is that the coronavirus simply washes once over the entire world, which takes only a few months and then disappears. In this scenario, we return to business and life as normal in three to four months. This is a 10% probability. And what we're seeing in China and Italy and other places is that the virus is reinfecting, the virus is mutating, the virus is changing. In the second scenario, the virus spreads worldwide, affecting people and countries one time only, and then disappears. This is a 30% probability. And the third probability is where the virus continues to mutate and spread worldwide over and over again, infecting and reinfecting over half the world's population. This, unfortunately, has a 60% probability of happening. And, unfortunately, this is the greatest possibility of what I'm seeing now. The challenge is that our current economy is not set up to handle this type of epidemic. Most world economies are based on consumerism. And because of this, these economies cannot withstand us not earning money, buying things, buying products and services, and spending a lot of money. Although the world governments can borrow incredible amounts of money and throw many trillions dollars, yen, rand at this problem. Money alone will not fix this problem. Money will not make it go away. 
We, including everyone in the world, must find a way to work together, to co-create together, to mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually support each other. We must create a new way of being, of sharing, and of supporting each other globally. We are not in this alone. This is a global challenge. The world economies are taking a huge bashing and the stock market just might go down by 50%. Few individuals, especially those in the United States, have more than a month's financial reserves before their house payment, car payment, and living expenses overwhelm them. Most companies, even the multinational conglomerates, are highly leveraged and deep in debt. So what will happen when there is little or no income for a few months? Economically, all governments and world economies are extremely fragile. How are they going to survive? What's going to happen? We have never experienced anything like this. We have experienced a dramatic world economic slowdown. However, except during World War II, we have never experienced a world economic collapse. Let's look at scenarios. What if this virus does not go away? What if it spreads into Central and South America and into Africa and keeps infecting and reinfecting millions of people worldwide? And humans are not the only species at risk. All primates worldwide who share about 98% of our DNA are also at risk. This includes the gorillas, chimpanzees, and other monkeys. The current information I'm receiving is warning me that this virus, even if we quarantine against it now, can and will keep mutating, recycling, and coming back again and again and again, year after year, until we develop a vaccine. So how are you and how are we going to survive? We need to radically change our thinking process. We need to learn to think outside of the outside of the outside of the box. We must learn to work together to survive. We must plant gardens, much like the victory gardens of World War II. We must learn to live in harmony with each other and with nature. We have to work together to get through this. At the same time, This has moved us into a time of working online, of teaching online, of digital everything. This is a time of radical thinking and a time of working together, unfortunately, remotely. At the same time, it is critical that we nurture and nourish our own heart, as well as stay connected with all of humanity. We are not separate and we were never separate. The entire planet is one giant ecosystem, and we must honor, respect, and support all sentient beings now and forevermore. Many of us have incarnated onto planet Earth knowing that this was going to happen. We've incarnated with the specific sole purpose of being here at this precise moment in time to help at this time of great need. Now is the time for us to wake up, to unite, to come together, and to work for the greater good. If you know you are one of the planetary helpers, let's connect up. And if you are in need or have a company in need, please contact me. I am committed to helping as many conscious individuals, organizations, and companies as possible. I'm even willing to help governments. Please stay positive, stay safe, and know that there are many of us who have come to help at this time of need. Thank you for listening to this and please share it with everyone you know. Many blessings, namaste, all my relations, Om Shante. And this is one of the few times that I'll share my spiritual name. It's Windwalker with the Buffalo Cape. 
please feel free to contact me. This is the information I'm getting in this moment. It may change in the next moment. If we on earth shift our consciousness, raise our consciousness, maybe this does not have to be so severe. I wish you well. God bless you. Please take good care of yourself. You're important. Thank you.